Okay, Southeast Asia environment. So in Tecla structure, we do have around, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's around 40 different environments. So 40 different environments means uh, uh, if you are living in U.S., then you can use the, uh, or if your project is about, uh, it's a, a U.S. project, so you can use the American uh, environment, or we have two environments in in uh, in U.S., the U.S. metric and U.S. imperial. So of course, in in U.S., they use they used to use the imperial inches. Um, so if you are in in uh, UK, so you can use a, a British code. So you can use the UK environment, or in Europe, you have the default environment. Uh, in Tecla structure, our default environment is a Europe. Euro code or Europe environment because this one comes from Finland. Okay, so, but now, what is this uh, Southeast Asia environment? So, Southeast Asia, as you know, uh, here in Southeast Asia we have a combination. So, some of our projects is a, uh, we are using a uh, profile from UK, some of our projects we use uh, a W section if you're talking about structural steel. Uh, so we combine those uh, those things, and then we end up to the uh, Southeast Asia environment. Similarly, in uh, Middle East, so Middle East environment and Southeast Asia is almost the same because in Middle East they don't have also a uh, uh, what do you call that uh, particular environment or standard that they're using, but it's a combination of a different environment. So that's what we have also in Southeast Asia. Now. In uh, in our role, so here, uh, I just you can select all, but uh, basically this uh, role, if uh, if you choose one of these role, there are some settings that particularly for that role uh, will be available. Okay, but uh, I would recommend that, that uh, we use this all, and then for the configuration, this one is <coughs> is about our licensing okay so the module so i don't know if i uh what what did i give it to you full is it full yeah, yeah. uh <coughs> i gave you the full <coughs> configuration so meaning you can do everything there okay but uh uh in tech structure we do have a different configuration from the project viewer to full then we have we do have also this educational educational actually is similar to to the Tecla campus that you can download from the internet it's free license okay so that one is uh, something like an online license so that one is the educational but but of course if if we uh, if you are talking to the uh, to the uni uh, we can give them the separate license as educational but that one is similar to our Tecla campus so Tecla Campus is something like a, uh, a free license for everyone who wants to learn Tecla structure, but that cannot the the model that you use there cannot be used in the production or cannot be used commercially because that one is for learning purposes. There will be a, some uh, uh, watermark in the drawing. <coughs> and then uh, now you have this uh, drafter construction modeling. Construction modeling you can only do the modeling and then create the GA drawing or the erection drawing. So you cannot, you cannot create a publication drawing. So engineering as well, rebar detailing, you can create the drawing, uh, but, uh, but of course there's a limitation compared to the precast concrete detailing. So this one is more on the, uh, on the CIP or cast in place. So if your project is a cast in place, then uh, usually they get this uh, rebar detailing. Then uh, these two items, the main, <coughs> the main uh, module, which is the precast concrete detailing and then the steel detailing. So precast concrete detailing, you can do all the drawings from GA drawing, cast unit drawing. So it will give you the shop tickets, the shop drawing with all the bar bending schedule. Okay. Uh, because rebar detailing, the difference is uh, the limitation of this one, there's no numbering on the, on the uh, rebar. Unlike the precast concrete detailing, there's, there will be a numbering. Each and every bar will have a piece marking. 
So that one is very uh, <coughs> is a requirement in the uh, in the publication, yeah. And as well as the steel detailing, steel detailing is you can create the uh, uh, what do you call that the uh, um, assembly drawing. So assembly drawing when you when you create the assembly drawing, then you give this one to your shop floor, and then they will cut, they will drill all the holes for your steel. Okay, so. Um, let's use this spool and then uh, we click on OK. <coughs> Alright, so here you will see that there is a, uh, a recent, so these are all the projects that you are working uh, currently. So it will be in the recent project. And also, you can see that the user here, you can see, uh, it's a single user, okay? Anyway, I'm going to explain to you what is this symbol all about. So if you look onto the all models, so here you can, uh, you can search for the model, I mean, to, to a, in a, from a different location because the model can be saved in a different location let's say in your drive a b c and so on or you can put your model on the uh uh what do you call that on your network all right so you can uh, search using the all models uh again as you can see here the user here there's a single user and then you can see there's a cloud symbol so cloud symbol meaning the model is, is in the cloud, okay? So I'm going to explain that one also. Uh, that one is under the shared model. And then if you go to this new, so this new, this is how you start the model. So in, in new, you can now add your uh, model file name, okay? So under the model file name, uh, you can type, let's say, uh, ace, PLP underscore model. So this one will be our uh, model file name. And by default, by default, uh, it will be placed under the Tecla structure models. Okay, by default. Whenever you open the Tecla structure and then you, you uh, or when, whenever you create the Tecla structure model, it will save under the Tecla structure models, wherein uh, in your C drive here, Tecla structure models. So all the Tecla structure models will be saved here by default. But of course, you can click this browse and then you can uh, browse for the location where you want to save. So you can save that one in a different uh, drive or you can save under this, uh, as you can see here, you have some, uh, what do you call that, network, okay? So you can save that one uh, in a different place. But by default, it will be under the Tecla structure models. Now, as you can see here, there is a single and multi-user. So single user, meaning uh, it's a standalone mode. So if we are given a project, so if you click single user, so it means each and every one of us will work individually, okay? So we work on the, uh, on the structure individually. So, I mean, you can, you can work on your own. It's a standalone, it means that, that's the single user. Now, if we talk about a multi-user, so meaning that uh, if we are given a project, let's say seven of us, the, uh, I mean, our project is something like a 14-story building. So we can divide the 14-story building to two story each. So first story, second, third, and so on. So at the end of the day, we have the 14-story building, one file, but we work together on that particular file. And that one is under the multi-user. And uh, again, uh, that one is just an example, but uh, of course, uh, we can divide that one according to our expertise. If I'm, if, if, if I'm uh, good on working on the uh, household shelter, 
So I will do all the household shelter of this uh, on this project, and then the other one will beam column, and then at the end of the day we have also one one whole building. Okay, and uh, this multi-user is uh, <coughs> is recommended only uh, if you're working on the network inside in your in your office. Okay. Now the question is, hey, how about if? Uh, uh, our office, uh, one of our offices, uh, I've heard that your of one of your offices in Pasiris or one is maybe in, in JB, right? So can we still uh, work together in one model? Yes, that one is possible. But in that case, uh, we use this uh, uh, model sharing. Model sharing is something like a cloud base. Uh, I mean, the, the, the model is in the big, in, in the cloud, but uh, not basically a cloud base, but the model will be placed in the cloud, but uh, the thing is, uh, let's say the Malaysia team, once they save, it will, it will synchronize to the cloud, and then if you want to see their model, you can synchronize to the cloud, and then you can see the model immediately as well. So there will be a uh, write out and read in. So if you want to see what ha they have done, so you can just simply read in. And then if you want to let them see what you have done, you write out to the cloud. So that one is the model sharing. <coughs> okay, so um, yeah, and uh, we do have also the template if you, I think, I mean in, in the advanced uh, uh, topic, then we can create, you can create your own template. So meaning if you have a project that uh, uh, the project has, let's say, has many blocks. So you have one template that can use for that blocks. So you don't need to repeat everything, the, the settings, okay? So that one is a, uh, one option. All right, so at the moment, we select the uh, single user and then kindly hit create, okay? So click create. So once you open the uh, the model, or once you create the model, so there will be an automatic uh, view that you can see in your in your window, right? So this view, a 3D view. Everybody have the uh, okay. It's good. Actually, this is the this is the first time I did this face-to-face -face training after uh, after eight months. So the last time I did that one is in Hong Kong and in January. So yeah, it's good that uh, Singapore now is almost flat and super. Okay, so uh, in this 3D, as you can see here, you will notice that there is a, uh, this cube, that cube, we call it as a work area, okay, work area. So meaning, uh, this is your working area inside the cube. So outside the cube, you will not able to see in your model. It's not, ne it's not necessarily that, uh, it doesn't mean that it's deleted, but it's if it is outside the working area. So meaning you don't you don't work on that particular element if that one is outside the working area. So okay, so to to navigate in this 3D model, uh, of course, zoom in, zoom out is just a uh, uh, middle button of your mouse, the ro the roller. You just roll it, zoom in, zoom out, 
and then if you if you press the middle button press press hold and then move the mouse then that one is panning okay it's panning but uh, if you if you include pressing the control key pressing the control key from your keyboard and then middle button of your mouse and then move the mouse then that one is the rotation rotation of the view okay so you can see here you can rotate zoom in zoom out panning and then rotation of the view so again um, as you can see this one is a 3d view if you want to put it on the plain view plain view just press control p control p uh, can i is changing the changing from 3d to plane so control p yeah so that one is a plane view control p that one is a 3d view so that one is just is a shortcut for the control uh, for the changing of the view control p uh, again let me remind you that in tecla structure there are uh, different uh, i mean there are commands, there are different commands, but uh, same output. So sometimes uh, we, we give this, we give this uh, 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 to the user, the different commands, but same output. So uh, because sometimes the user has their own prefer preference how to do certain things. So we give this one to you and then it's, it's your choice which one is easier for you to change. So let's say in this case, if I press Control P, I change it. But if I go to this view, so that one is similar to this icon. So if I click this icon, so changing the 3D to, to plane. But that one is the shortcut is Control P. Okay? And similarly, if I double click the view, if I double click this view, so you can see here the angle 3D. And then if you select plane, and then click modify okay so it changed to to plane so i think this one is the long longest way of changing the 3d view to plane view okay so plane and then 3d and then modify okay uh before we go further uh let me just uh uh explain this one to you so you will see that there is a because you will see a lot of this uh OK, apply, modify, get, and then this uh, uh, on and off button or selection button, and then cancel. OK, uh, if you say modify, so modify means you want to change something. So here, if I want to change 3D to plain view and then click modify, so you change, you change it by simply clicking modify. But if I change this one to 3D and then click apply, nothing will change. So what is the difference in modify? Up, modify immediately it will change according to your uh, changes in the selection. Apply means this, these settings will be applied in the next creation of the view. So meaning, uh, apply is uh, you are applying the settings that you have created okay that you have set and then when you when you say click when you click OK and then click OK meaning it will apply and then close this dialog box that's okay so if you cancel of course it will just cancel your uh, your uh, setting here but uh, what is this if you look onto this one, what is this gap? <clears throat> this gap. So look, the angle now is 3D. The angle is 3D, but my uh, the view is still 2D. 
Okay? If I click get, so look, the angle becomes plain because it gets the properties of the existing view. So that's what get is. All right? Now, what is this box, the uh, checkbox on off? Checkbox meaning, uh, look, if I... If I click on this one, everything will be turned off. All the check will be gone. Okay? Now, let's say I want to remove only one. So I check all every I, I check everything and then I will check out the or check off the angle. Alright? Then if I change this one to 3D, but this one is is off, the checkbox is off. And then I modify. Look what will happen. Nothing. Nothing. Because this one is off. But if I check, if I turn it off everything and then I check on only the angle and then modify, so it becomes 3D again. So that's the use of on and off. Because in our properties, let's say for example, you select a multiple properties and then you want to, uh, to adapt only a particular, a particular parameter. So you can use the on and off. Okay? So that's the use of this on and off. Now, let's move on to, to our uh, uh, grid line. So look, in our grid line, by the way, can you, because by default, you will notice that the direct modification is on. Okay? So can you kindly turn off the direct modification? So here, you can see here, direct modification. Uh, can you see? So kindly turn it off. All right. Can, can you see the direct modification? That one is a bit uh, small. Just turn it off. So later on, I will uh, I will show you what's the use of that uh, direct modification. Actually, that one is a powerful tool, but at the moment we don't need that one yet. So I want you to select the uh, the grid line. So once you select the grid line and double click on it, okay? Double click on the grid line. So on your right hand right hand side, okay. On your right hand side, you will find the coordinates, the labels, the extension, the origin, and the properties of the, the grid line. Okay. So, you will notice here that uh, the X, Y, and Z, that is the coordinates. So, meaning... Uh, So this one is your grid line. Okay. So this one is x, x direction. This is y. All right. So you will notice here that uh, yeah, uh, you will notice here the x and y value there. Okay. The x and y value there. We call it as a relative value. Why relative value? We always start from zero. We always, start, we always start from zero. So from zero, okay, let's say from the x, from zero to this point, there is a value here. And then from this point to another point, or let's say uh, we call it one, two, three, four. Then this one is a, b, c. So from two to three, there is a value as well. So from three to four, there is a value. So this value, when we write it to the box, okay, to the parameter, so we call it as start from zero, then space. So this value, let's say, let's say three thousand space, 
But let's say this one is 3,000, 3,000, then this one is 4,000. So space, 3,000, then space, then 4,000. So meaning, this value is for this, this, and this. So we call this one as a relative value. Relative value. So it's like you're putting a dimension. Okay? So we always start from zero, then the, from the coordinates x. So from zero, from one to two, that one is 3,000. So that's the value, 3,000. And then the next grid is 3,000 and 4,000. So that's how you write it in the coordinates. Similarly, similarly, to our, let's say this one is 5,000, 6,000, 5,000. Ah, oh, sorry. Or maybe another one here. One, A, B, C, D, D. Okay? So similarly, if this one is X and then this one is Y, so again, a relative value. So start from 0, 0 to A to B, 0, then A to B is 5,000, B to C is 6,000, C to D is 5,000. So that one is the uh, value that we're going to put in our X and Y. So remember, X and Y are relative values. Okay? So you will notice in our 3D view, you can see only X and Y at the moment. The Z later on. Okay? Now, uh, do you have any question on this X and Y? Any question? Clear? Now, if, you're, if we are clear on this one, then we move on to the Z direction. So, because the Z direction is, uh, we, the value there is different. Okay? So, let's say I have the X, uh, Z direction here. So, this is the uh, Z direction. All right. So let's say this one is uh, elevation zero. Okay, so this is the value here. So let's say this one is 3,000. So this one is uh, 3,000. This one is 2,500. Okay. So now, if this one is the elevation, how we are going to write it in our parameter? So again, we always start from zero. Okay, zero. This one is there. From zero, zero to first floor is how much? 3,000. Now, in Z direction, we don't, uh, we don't continue from where it stopped. Unlike, uh, unlike the X and Y, Okay, the X and Y. Because in X and Y, we continue where we stop, right? That is a relative value. So in this case, our, uh, in this case, we have this, uh, the way we, we write it in Z direction is absolute value. Absolute. So absolute value is something like a, uh, it's like a running dimension. You know, when we write the running dimension, we have this uh, reference dimension, RD, right? So we always start on the reference dimension. So meaning, in that case, uh, the second one here, the, the second floor, so we start from zero again, and then we get the sum of these two. So instead of uh, 3,000, 3,000, this one will be 3,000, right? This one is 3,000, and then here is 6,000, and then for the third floor, from zero again to the third floor is how much? 8,500. So that's how you write it in the Z direction. If you write this one as 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, then it will be wrong. So remember that one. Relative and absolute value. 
Okay. So in this case, I think uh, I'm going to give you a sample uh, grid line here that we are going to we're going to modify that grid. Okay. So this will be the value the value here. Okay. Let me just. So this one is the elevation. So let's say, uh, uh, let's say this one is A1, A2, A3, A4. 
ok So 3.5, then 6.5, and 9.5. Yeah, because this one is 3.5. 3.5. Eh? Okay, so I'll just show this one to, to my screen. Okay, uh, to change the uh, okay, so to change the our grid line properties or coordinates. So select the grid line from the x direction, zero, space, um, five thousand, space five thousand, space. Uh, 4,000, 4,000, actually you can write that one in 2 times 4,000. Similar, that one is same. Huh? If you type 4,000 space 4,000 or 2 star 4,000, it's same. Okay? And then in uh, Y direction, it will be 0, 5,000 space 6,000 space 5,000. And then in the Z direction, it will be 0, 3,500 space 6,500 space 9,500 and the X uh, X label it will be 1.1 space 1.2 space 1.3 space 1.4 1.5 and then in Y that will be A1 then uh, A2 A3 and then A4 and in the Z direction it will be FFL or finished floor line space then first floor first space floor so okay notice this one first space floor so if I type space then then it will be first ah uh, first and then it will be floor okay because I put space so enable for you to to have a first floor only in this level then you type that one inside the double quotation mark or you put underscore okay so if you don't want to put underscore then you put that okay you type here double quotation mark then first space floor and don't and then double quotation mark so in that case the first floor will be one word because if you t if you put space between the first and floor, that will be two words, okay? So, you type here, double quotation mark. And then space, second space, floor. And then space, roof. Okay, all right, and then hit this modify. All right, so as you can see here, the view or the the uh, the grid line expanded, but your working area still small. Okay, so your working area it's not yet fitted to your grid line. So enable for us to fit the working area to the grid line, you must select the view, 
select this view select I mean when I say select the view you must click you must click anywhere here in the view and then you will find that there is a uh, this one has a uh, okay you will find that this one has a golden or uh, this yellow gold border so meaning that that is the indication that you are selecting the view okay and then you right click on it and then fit work area to entire model so right click and then here click fit work area to entire model so once you click on the fit work area to entire model so your working area will be expand to cater the whole uh, grid lines all right okay so uh, yeah and again going back to our grid line just to look onto the grid line if you scroll down below on the properties okay so you will see that there's a uh, uh, there are some uh, settings here that you can also change if you like huh? but um, I, I will just show you what what it is but uh, it's your choice because I cannot I cannot uh, tell you hey always use the blue one always use the red one no it's still your choice whether your grid color could be uh, could be black or could be uh, yellow if you like just modify so here you can uh, you can modify the grid color and even the the size the, the font if you like a uh, this color blue on your font so that will be your color you can change it and even the uh, the size yeah the size of the font and uh, you will notice as well that here a3 yeah, is it's quite near to this grid line so if you want to extend this a3 longer so you need to go to the extension so you can see here line extension if you click if you see this line extension here line extension left below right above so by default it's one meter one meter only so if you want to change it you can type everything let's say three meters so copy and then oh, sorry Cop, copy you copy this one and then you paste that one to the others and then modify so look I extended my extension and then fit work area again there you go <clears throat> by the way uh, in this uh, in this example what we're going to do is is more on the uh, cast in place the, the last training that we have is more on the precast. Uh, this one will be, uh, our elements here will be cast in place and then on the top we put a structural steel. So are you doing structural steel as well? Or is there a case that you do also structural steel? No. Okay. So what we will do is, it's a combination. So concrete and structural steel. So unlike from the, our previous training that you attended, it's more on the uh, concrete side. So this one I will include the the structure. Uh, I mean uh, a small part of the structural steel on the on the roof. Okay. All right. So now that we have this uh, grid line, so as you can see here. Ah, okay. All right. Thanks. So now. Um, what we're going to do next is again if you notice here there is an origin okay there is an origin here XYZ origin okay now this origin let me tell you that this origin is uh, is this this zero zero this one is the zero 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 okay so this is the one so this one is exactly the same as the origin of your AutoCAD. Okay, AutoCAD, AutoCAD uh, origin. Uh, the reason why I'm telling that, as we all know, I mean, I know that you are uh, dealing with, with Revit as well. Because the Revit 00, uh, it's because there are two points in, in Revit. 
the survey point, and the project point. Now, enable for you to match the Revit coordinates. So when you export the Revit to, to IFC, you must identify the project point. Then we can have, we can put that one on the same coordinates. But anyway, if you're using the, uh, the survey points, then it will be, some, sometimes it will be too far, right? But you can still use, I mean, I mean we have the, the way to do that one in Tecla structure now, especially in our reference model. So referencing the, the origin. Okay, so that one will be uh, later. Okay, but uh, I just want to tell you that this origin is similar, exactly similar to your AutoCAD 000. Okay, if you change this one, let's say X, if I change this to, uh, to 3000 and then my Y is 3000, you don't need to follow. If I modify this one, look what will happen. So here, it moves as long, al along with the, uh, with the Z direction. Okay, so now uh, let's create the let's create the uh, the grid view. So previously uh, for uh, these two guys, we we create it manually. But uh, now I will just show you uh, one one sample of manual, and then we will go to to the creation of the grid view. Okay, we we do it quickly. Okay, so the first one is uh, we create the plan view at the uh, first floor plan view at the first floor so to create the plan view at the first floor you must select the new view and then click basic view okay I uh, just hold on huh? let me pre uh, let me just open the uh, the view list by pressing the control I control I okay so under the control I, uh, this one is the list of our views. The views that we are going to create will be listed here. Now, if you look onto the visible view on the right side, that one is 3D. Uh, this one, 3D, right? Now, the first question is, hey, I want to change the name. I want to put it 3D view instead of 3D. So if you want to change this, this name, you cannot change it here, but you just double click this view, double click the view, and then it will open the, the view properties. Then here, under the name, you type here 3D, then view. 3D view and then modify. So look, once I click modify, so this one change, uh, this one, oh, sorry. I change this name, 3D view. So once I hit the modify, this one changed to 3D view, and then that name view, name view is 3D view now. All right? So that one is the uh, uh, changing of the name of the view. Now, um, if I cancel this one, so look, 3D view on the right side, meaning that one is visible in your view. So if I put this view on the left side, look what will happen. So my, my views are gone. My view is gone. So no more views in your Tecla structure windows because the view is something like reserved. Okay? But if you want to see again that view, then you must put this one on the right or you, you must select this arrow and then put that one on the right side. So then you have this view again. Now, let's create the view. So again, at the moment, I have only 3D view. Then, remember, this 3D view is based on the zero coordinates. Okay? This 3D view is based on the zero coordinates. So it, it was created under the zero level, zero coordinates. So uh, then you will notice as well, okay, again, this one, uh, this, work area so as you can see here from the zero there is a uh, uh, what do you call that this one has a value and to the bottom there's a value and then to up there's a value so meaning that one is the range of the view that you can see so there's a range so how to identify that range if you double click again or if you open the view properties okay under the view properties you can see this 
This one. Visibility, view depth up 15 meters and view, view depth down 1 meter. So meaning, this one is 1 meter from 0, 1 meter, and then going up, that one is 15 meter. So the meaning of this one, you will able to see the model only on the 15 meter height. If your building is 20 meters, so you can see only up to 15 meters. The, the remaining 5 meters elements will not be shown in the view because that one is the limit that you specify here in the view depth. Okay, so look, if I change this view depth, let's say I put 1,000, 1,000 and then modify. So see here, so I can see only 1,000, 1,000. Z direction, yes. So I type, I type here uh, 15 meters, modify, so now that one is 15 meters. All right, so I'll uh, close this one. Now, uh, going back to in the creation of view, let's say I want to create the view on the plan level first floor, on the first floor plan. I want to create a view. So let me show you first how to create it manually, and then after that, we will uh, create all the views automatically okay so manually uh, the reason why is uh, so that we can create in any we can create the view in any position okay that's the reason why we need to learn how to do it manually okay so if you go to this new view okay go to this kindly go to the new view and then uh, you can see the basic view under the new view, there's a basic view. Don't hit that one yet, but I want you to press the shift key, shift key from your keyboard. Shift, press the shift key and then click the view, basic view. And there you go. So why we need to press the shift key and then hit this uh, basic view? So the shift key will enable us to open the view properties before we create. Because if we just create, okay, if we just create the, uh, the view, we don't know what will be the name of that one. We cannot, uh, uh, we cannot set up the name or we cannot set up the, the, uh, the view depth or the angle or the projection. So we cannot do that one if we just simply select the basic view. That's the reason why we need to press the shift and then pick the basic view. So... Now that we have the view properties here, so we can now type here the name. So what will be the name? So let's say first floor, first floor plan. First floor plan, and then the angle, I don't want to be 3D when I create this one. I want this one to make to be plan, plain. And then uh, as you can see the visibility, I want one meter, one meter. I don't want, because, okay, look. In the first floor plan, I want one meter up, one meter down. Why? If I type here 15 meters up and one meter down in the first floor plan, so meaning when I look on the first floor plan and the, and the uh, view depth up is 15 meters, I can still see the second floor and then the roof. So there will be no, uh, what do you call that? The, the range will be more if you have 15 meters. So the meaning of one meter, one meter, so from this, from this first floor plan, so I can see only one meter up and then one meter down. So I will not able to see the second, second floor because the second floor distance is three meters. Unless you want, then you increase the view depth. But since we, are, we need to work only on that particular level, then we want to see only that level. Okay, and then if you're happy with this one, then select, click apply. So this is the time that we click apply. Apply. Don't, don't click OK, just simply click apply. Why? Apply meaning we are accepting, we are accepting this setting. First floor plan and then 1000, 1000. That's the reason why we apply. Don't click OK because if you click OK, then this one, this one will be closed. We are going to use that one later. So 
So when I click apply, so the next one is go to this create basic view. So is everybody's following? Okay, under the create basic view in the X and Y, okay, under the X and Y, so what, what is the coordinates of the, what's the coordinates of the first floor plan? Can you tell me? The first floor plan, what is the coordinates of the first floor plan? The, the 3D is on zero, the first floor plan is what? 3,000? 3,500. Because we are on, okay, remember, our 3D is already created based on the ground floor or the FFL. Now, the first floor plan will be one level up, which is how much? So, 3,500. So, you need to type here 3,500. Okay? And then create. So, look what will happen. Once you create this one. So, look. If you look onto the plan, it looks it's it looks like the same, right? It looks like the same. But if you rotate this one, look what will look look at the difference. If you rotate, can you see the coordinates, the origin? So the origin now is below. That one is the three thousand five hundred. Now in this case, in this case, I think you get already the idea. So you can continue working on this one if you want to create the the uh, second floor plan. So what will be the what will uh, what you're going to do if you cre if you want to create the second floor plan? All you have to do is just simply select this one, change this one to second second floor plan, apply. Okay, apply, and then coordinates will be what? 6, yes, six thousand five hundred, and then create. And that's it. So you can see uh, the moment that you create the plan, the moment that you, that you create the view, so your, your, uh, this one, your view list will be populated with the views that you have created. Okay? So as long as you create, create, create your views, then this one will be populated with the view names. Okay? So that one is how you create the plan. Okay, and Sorry. yes. Can we create a 3D view also? 3D view. Can we create? Uh, what do you mean 3D view? Actually, this one is also a. Uh, uh, you mean something like like this one? Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, earlier I just uh, select this uh, angle to 3D, but basically this one doesn't have a fix. Uh, uh, unlike others that you have the fix 2D and fix 3D, no. Tecla structure, this one is something like inter always interchangeable to 3D and 2D. So whether you select this one 3D or plane, doesn't matter. So that one is just a, uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, the default that will be shown. But anytime you can always change that one to 3D, okay? All right, so now let me uh, close this one. So the next, the next one is, uh, okay, now the question is, in this create basic view, can we, can we, uh, can we use this create basic view on creating the elevation view? The answer is yes we can create the elevation view using this create basic view this one using this one oh sorry using this one we can create the elevation view how if you look onto the plane okay look onto the plane so the plane selection has three the xy which is the one that we have created now and then the xz uh, the I mean the elevation along X and then the elevation along Y so in that case if I want to create let's say X Z okay and then I type here zero so what okay I want to ask you if I put here X Z meaning 
uh, uh, what do you call that, elevation along X, and then my coordinate is zero, what grid will I create? Which grid line? A1. A1, yes, A1. Because this one is the zero, zero. If I click here, okay, let me type here, uh, let's say A1, and then apply. Okay, look, create. So this one will be A1. So look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this one is the elevation, FFL, first floor, second floor, and roof. Right? Now, going back to the create basic view, if I type here 5,000, of course, the grid that I'm going to create is what? A2. Because from zero, from zero to here is 5,000. So A2, right? Now, if I type here, let's say if I type here 8,000. It's between A2 and A3. Now, this is the this is the thing that I want you to know because the good thing of knowing the manual way of creating the view is you can create in any position you like, right? So in any, in any if, if you want to chop this one in a different position, you can do it because you know how to do it. So this is the manual usage of creation of the view, okay? I'm not going any further on this one, then you can try that one later, okay? But of course, uh, the next one that I want to show you is okay remember we create the basic view then the next one is using two points okay this one is another creation of view using two points that's why i told you earlier that in tecla structure there are different ways to create a certain uh, i mean output okay it's your choice which one is easier and better for you okay the using two points meaning i can create now the view in the elevation or in the plan using two points. How? Okay, again, I'm going to press the shift key and then click two points. So again, it will show to me the view properties. Let's say I'm going to type here A3 and then apply. So using two points is this. Pick the first position. So here, pick the first position. Again, uh, whenever you have a command, take note of this one, guys. Whenever you have a command, Always look on the left bottom corner because that is that is the next thing you 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 need to do. Pick the first position. So you follow what will be the next command here. Okay, so pick first position. So look, this is my cursor. So if I click anywhere on this A3 line, okay, look, I click on the end point. Can you see the arrow going up? Yeah. So what's the meaning of arrow going up? So meaning you are going, yeah, you are going to look on that view. All right? Here. You are looking from here. And then it will create one, two, three, four, five. All right? So, but if I put my arrow going down, so you're looking on the view from here. So the view will be 1.5, 1.4, it will be, okay, let me, let me look onto this one, see? So look, 1.5, 1.4, 1.1, because I look on the other way. So this is another, uh, I mean, option for you to create a view. So you can choose on the which direction you want to look onto the view. Unlike, unlike the other view, the basic view is something like it's a, a one way. It's something like, a, I don't know, if, I think it's a north, north and east. Northeast. I think that's, that's the standard, looking at the, go, looking at the north and looking at the east. Okay, but in this case, if you go to this using two points, then you can decide which way you want to look at. Okay, even, even if you try to do this one, Let's say XX, apply. I can even click a view from, from this point to this point. Right? 
So if I click this diagonal view, then see. So this one is something like a uh, a different angle of, of your view. This one is also useful if you want to look onto the roof. You know the roof. If you have the roof. So if you want to create a true roof plan, right? True roof plan, then you you need to make a two points, two point view. Okay? Can you try this one? And then after this, we're going to uh, uh, create the uh, the grid lines automatically. So again, we have discussed the basic view and using two points. Okay? Yeah, sure, it's okay. You can uh, you can have a uh, ten minutes break. Control I, you can see the the uh, the grid that I created. Okay, so if you have created one, kindly uh, select all and then delete. Okay, kindly select all and then delete. Yeah. Now, there is a case that, especially for the beginner, a lot of clicks, then suddenly your 3D also deleted. Does it happen to you now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, no. so now, what we're going to do if we don't have any view? So earlier, we created already, we have a, uh, we know already how to create the view, right? So go to the new view, and then create the new 3D view. Okay, as simple as that. So if your 3D, if you, in, in, if in your view list, you don't have anything now, so it's time for us to create a new one. So how? Go to this view. So go going back to the go up, go back to the basic. So remember that one. So if suddenly or accidentally you uh, deleted all the view, then no worry. The model the model are still there. The only thing the view is not there, but the model still there there. So you just need to create you just need to create the view all right so under the basic view press the shift key and then click basic view and then this time we are going to create the 3d view so here 3d 3d view i can create that one in plain or like what you asked earlier if you want to make it 3d then just choose 3d it's okay and then here the visibility of my 3d view is what 15 right but in our in our uh, example here, what is the height of our building? Nine five. So we can just simply type here ten meters, right? Okay. So apply, apply, and then uh, plane view must be x y. Don't forget the x and y, because we need to create that one on the x and y coordinates, and then the coordinates must be zero, and then create, and that's it. So you have now this. So, in case that your view is expanded, you always right-click and then fit work area to entire model. Huh? Right-click, fit work area to entire model. <coughs> so that it will be fitted to your grid lines. Okay? Okay, now, if you have the 3D view, now let's create the grid lines, the grid views, okay, the grid views. You know already how to create it manually, now this time I'm going to show you how to create it quickly, okay. 
So as simple as this, select the, select the grid, right click on your mouse, right click, and then look on the view, create view, and then along grid lines. Create view along grid lines. Can you see that? This one? Create view along grid lines. Click that one. So it will show up this create creation of view along grid lines. This is the same that we have there, right? This, this method is the same that you can use from the tab, right? Uh, I think... You mean here? The new view. Ah, uh, this one. A new view. Yeah, along the grid. Uh, this one along grid, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Okay, Let, let's let's try so that we can uh, confirm. Yes, it's the same. Yeah. Okay, so once you have this uh, creation along grid lines, okay, all you have to do, all you have to do is to create. Hit this create, and that's it. You have already the the views that we have created manually earlier. So everybody got it? So that one is the quicker one. Now, but there's a problem on that. Why? Because this one will create only the view on the grid line. That's the reason why you need to know how to create it manually. Because in case that in your, in your modeling, you need a, a view, like, like what we have created, in the, in the, you want to create a view between the A2 and A3, you must know how to do it. Okay? This one will create only the view on the grid line. Unless, unless you added additional grid line there, a dummy grid line. And then it will create another view. Okay? Now, if it is happen that you want to click you, your, uh, your hand, your finger is quite fast. You, you click here, oops, I click here twice or thrice. It happens. So, if you notice here, there is a dash one, dash two, meaning that one is a copy. So, instead of selecting dash one, dash two, dash one, dash two, dash one, dash two, dash one, dash two, and then delete, so, I would suggest that select all and delete, and then create, as simple as that. Okay? Can you uh, uh, try that one? Play a little bit in that grid view. Renaming the view. Okay, just uh, control I. So let's say, for example, you click on the grid one, right? You double click, you, you open the grid one, right? So if you want to rename this grid 1.1, let's say I want to put that one as Bernadette grid. Uh, so you type here this one, Ber burn, and then modify, and that's it. So now you have this burn grid. But but of course, but of course, because this one, the grid that the the naming here that we have created is according to the properties earlier, right? Earlier. Uh, okay. Let me just show it to you uh, so that uh, uh, you will not get lost on that one. So if you if you go back to the uh, along grid lines, uh, here you can see the the prefix, the view grid, grid plan, grid elevation. So if you want to change that that naming you, you must click on this show so that it will show the properties so here plan at so you can type a prefix there plan at grid at so if you don't want to put a plan at let's say you type what what, what you call it top uh, uh, plan view or something like plan view at something like that Okay, 
So now, um, <clears throat> before we move on to the uh, uh, oh, okay. Let's say we want to modify uh, this one. This one is our initial grid line. Then suddenly we receive a design drawing. Okay, and then we, we want to match our grid line to the design drawing, right? So the design drawing, I already sent it. Uh, have you sent it to them? Let's say the PDF, the PDF file. Okay, uh, can you open the PDF file? Okay, so here. Yeah, you will find the geometry geometry model. Right? So this is the geometry model. You will notice you will notice here that the dimensions, okay? You will notice here that the dimensions from this geometry model is called, is different. It is the same setup, but the, the, the size or the, uh, the dimensions are different. So if you open the, the uh, yeah, the 3D, yes. So if you notice there, yeah, the, uh, the dimension is different. So I think 6,000, uh, this one is 6,000, 6,000, 6,000, otherwise it's 5,000, 6,000, and 5,000, right? So now, uh, in Tecla structure, Remember, this one is a PDF file. In Tecla Structure, we have the options to insert the PDF files inside the model. Okay? But, again, let me disclaimer. Uh, there is an issue in the PDF file. As you know, PDF file can be raster, can be vector, right? Raster, totally, you cannot use the raster file because that one is just a scan image. Vector, yes, but there is an issue if you ins insert the uh, the vector of uh, PDF because of the scaling. There's a problem on the scaling. We, we find out this one that, uh, I don't know, uh, I think that one is in the conversion or something, because the scaling sometimes, if you if you insert the vector PDF file in Tecla structure, uh, you can get the scaling vertically, correct? Then horizontal is different, okay. But anyway, uh, the the usage of that one will be the reference only. So you don't need to open again the PDF and then go back to your model. So you can just you can just follow the uh, the dimensions that stated there, okay. But in this case, since this PDF file was created using Tecla structure, then uh, I think the scaling will be correct, okay. Okay, let's let's try, huh? And uh, okay, so uh, from from your file menu, you click on this import file menu import, and then you can see here insert PDF. Insert PDF. Uh, by the way, this this one it will insert. Actually, it will not insert exactly the PDF file but uh, there is a uh, on the background on the background the PDF is converted to DXF okay but again uh, if you have a DWG file that one of course is much better than the PDF file DWG? Uh, drawing file the AutoCAD file yeah, okay. yeah if you have that AutoCAD file then because what happened is uh, Okay, usually in my in our client, uh, if they have a project, they were given a PDF files. So this is the only thing that they can do. They can use that one as a reference. But if you are given a uh, DWG or drawing files or AutoCAD files, then that one is better because the scaling is perfect. You can just simply use that one as your guide to model because the layout is already there. But as you know, in Singapore, in, in this industry, Enable for you to get the, the drawing, you have to pay for that one, right? So, PDF then you can get, but if you want the drawing, then you must pay. So, 
Anyway, in, in this case, uh, I, ju I just want to show you the, uh, uh, the option here. So if you click here, insert PDF, okay? So look, insert PDF preference model, you need to browse, okay? Kindly, kindly browse that uh, uh, geometry model, browse, and then select the geometry model PDF, and then click open. <clears throat> now, <coughs> okay, um, if the PDF file is a, uh, there's a multiple file inside, then you can select which page you want to insert in the model. But since this one is only one page, then it's okay. Then the scale, uh, kindly, uh, is your PDF file still open? Yeah. Can you, anyway, maybe if one of you is, uh, your PDF is open, kindly, uh, kindly check the scale of the plan view. One is to 60. One is to 60. So then the scale here, must be 1 is to 60. Okay? And kindly click OK. And now, I think we need to wait for a while because on the background, it's converting the, uh, the PDF to, the, uh, to DXF. Okay? <coughs> okay, let's see. Ah, okay, so, sorry, I did not pick the insertion. Pick insertion point of the reference, so I need to click here. Click, pick, yeah, there you go. So I forgot to pick the insertion. But again, if you, if you look onto that one, if you pick the insertion to the zero, zero, you can see that the, uh, uh, the title, the, the border of the title is on the zero, zero, on the zero, zero. Right? So what we need to do there is we need to adjust. We need to adjust this one. So look. Uh, can you see this one? This one? Okay. So this one, 1 1.1 here, this one must be moved to this zero. Okay, how to move that one? Kindly select, select this one. And then, first of all, okay, remember to turn on your snap, snapping tools. Kindly turn on the uh, intersection, the perpendicular, the nearest, and the any position. So you need to turn on that one. Okay. So for me, uh, most of the time I turn it on uh, beside the two snapping here. Okay. So okay. So to move it. Okay. Look. Select. Right click, and then you can see here move. 
move and then pick the origin for moving so I'm going to pick the the crossing between the 1.1 and the A1 okay so click on this click and then move to the 0 0 0 so look here 0 0 0 and there you go So everybody is on the uh, right position. Okay, done. All right. So now I'm just trying to to give you something like a uh, uh, a practical uh, um, what do you call that application on, on this one. Huh? So let's say uh, initially our grid line is five meter, six meter, and five meter, and then suddenly when we insert our uh, reference, then it's totally different. Okay. So in this case. Actually, if you select this grid line, double click the grid line, I can go back here and then map, change this one to 6 meters, 6 meters, 6 meters to, to uh, what do you call that, uh, to match our reference. Okay? But I can also use another method. Uh, actually, this one is simpler, but uh, let me just show you another method. So look, look at this A2, A2 and 1.2. So I want to move this, I want to move this uh, grid line to this, right? I, I want to move it to match the 1.2. So all I have to do, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right, okay. So all I have to do is to remember the uh, the direct modification that we turned off in earlier. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So just turn on the direct modification. Okay. Turn it on. Okay. Which one is it? The direct one. Ah, yeah, this this one. Or you can you can press you can press D letter D. Yeah. So once you press that D, so look what will ha look what will happen if you select the uh, if you select the uh, what do you call that the grid line. It's different, right? Because there is something like a plus sign here at the middle between the grid line. There's a plus sign. So that's the direct modification. And the direct modification works like this. So look at my screen. So in the direct modification, I can select this grid line. Huh? I can select this grid line. Select and then move it like this. Oh, sorry. 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 You need to be precise on this moving, see? 1,000. Ah, uh, yeah, see? 1,000, then move. Okay? And then here, this one. Move, 1,000, 1,000. And then lastly, this one is 2,000. Yeah, something like drag and drop.
Okay. Okay. So the meaning of this one, the meaning of this is your view list will be totally different. Okay. So all you have to do is control I, control I. So this one is obsolete. Delete and then create a new a fresh a fresh grid views okay but anyway you can do that one later because anyway it, it's easy so I, I want you to check also on this one so look if you select the grid line you can see the uh, there is a uh, uh, what do you call that a uh, intermediate node or this plus sign here so plus this one the plus sign so if you click this plus sign it will have additional grid line so uh, the moment you click that plus sign then additional grid line between the grid so see i can add more grid line once you click the plus sign so meaning if you have a uh, uh okay we don't have the ability to import the grid line from autocad or some other software but in this case you can map the grid line if you put the AutoCAD or PDF in Tecla, you can map the grid line using this uh, method, direct modification. So let's say, for example, undo. So let's say, for example, I have a grid line here. There's a grid line here. All I have to do is click on this one and then move this one here. There you go. So easy. You can easily map to and then match that one to your reference. Okay, so that's how the direct modification works. Okay, so now once you once you have uh, uh, used this functionality, the direct modification, you can just simply turn off. Okay, turn it off and then uh, use the normal one. Because sometimes uh, the direct modification. Uh, uh, Okay, direct modification is something like uh, it's a drag and drop as well. If that one is always on, and then if you are, if you don't really uh, don't know how to use it, if you pick the object, okay, and then drag it somewhere, uh, you can drag it anywhere. So using the the direct modification. So be careful on using. It's a powerful tool, but yet sometimes the drawback is some is something like the displacement of the object. If you have the de drag and drop or direct modification on. Okay, so now that we have this, so we can. Uh, okay, look. This one is the. If if you notice here, this this one is for the plan at the first floor, okay, but this 3D. This 3D must be on the foundation. So the foundation is this side. So we can just simply, okay, let's say I want to use the foundation reference first. So I can just simply select this one and then move. So I'm going to move this one here. So as you can see here, only foundation will be, will be shown. And then once I finish this one, I can move to the, sec the first floor. And then I can rotate this one to use that one on my elevation. So that's how you use the reference okay yes you can yes oh no need okay uh, let me just create first okay select and then uh, I'm going to create along 3d views okay now so look huh? I'm going to open the first floor plan so in my first floor plan it's nothing, right? Nothing. So let me just uh, have a two views here. <clears throat> so I'm going to select now the reference. Right click and then copy special linear. Copy special linear. Uh, okay, can you follow that one? Copy special linear. <clears throat> How do you read the uh, Okay. Actually, here under the window, you can see here tile vertically. <coughs> Is it a shortcut? Uh, I will uh, show you the shortcut uh, later. 
how to create your shortcut. But at the moment, you, get, you go to the window and then tile vertically. Okay, and then from here, okay, right click, right click, uh, copy, linear, okay, and then Z direction, it's going up, right? 3.5. Yes, 3.5. And then copy, and there you go. So now you can simply move this one here and there you go so you have now the reference for the for the uh, finished floor line and then the uh, first floor Okay. All right. So now, um, for the shortcut that I created earlier, so because here uh, I removed the one view, right? Then I press one. It expand. So for the shortcut, you can go to this. Uh, uh, settings under the settings there's a keyboard shortcut yeah so under this keyboard shortcut you can see all the commands here now the example that I have created is tile T I L E tile so if you type this tile so you can choose either tile vertically or tile horizontally so in my case, I type here, okay, if you go to this tile horizontally, select the tile horizontally, you can see here enter shortcut. So click enter shortcut, and then now you can just simply type what shortcut you like. If you press Q, letter Q, then you type Q. If you want to uh, type uh, control Q, then you type control Q. If you want alt Q, if you want shift Q, shift W, so you can uh, do that one. But look, if I type control C, look what will happen. Yes. It will it will tell you if it is uh, taken. But here you can just simply type one letter. But of course you cannot type two letter. I mean one, but uh, if you want you can use the functionality of shift control plus the letter and the alt. Yeah, so you can also try to use the uh, <coughs> cancel. 
Yeah, uh, because in my case, my vert, uh, tile vertical is the Q, and then let's say, the, because this one is the commonly, uh, I use it very, uh, uh, I, I use it always, and then if I want to to put a uh, shortcut for the redraw, I type redraw, yeah, redraw all views, then I type here W. So my redraw, I just simply type W, then it will redraw the view. Okay. All right. So again, you can uh, choose whatever uh, command that you want. Of course, uh, the moment that you use the tagla, then you can see a lot of commands there, and then you can add a shortcut later. So this one is how simple you can uh, add the shortcut. Okay. Close. Now. Let's uh, continue. So if you notice here, look, if you notice here in my 3D view, in my 3D view, the, the two reference are shown. <coughs> Why? Because in my 3D view, the view depth is higher. Yeah, it's up to 10 meter. That's why I can see the, sec the first floor. So, but again, we're going to use this one later. So if we don't want, if you are not going to use it now, so you must turn off the reference. So here, under the uh, on the right hand side, on the right hand side, you can see this one reference model. So you can see that there are two reference model there. One is the on the first floor. One is on the ground floor. So if you want to turn on the the first floor, then uncheck the, the eye or, or if you don't want to to see both then turn off both then there you go so you have now the empty one okay so this one is the uh, uh, our grid line so any any question on this any question on the grid line Okay, so uh, let, let us continue. Um, the next one is how we are going to, to have a diagonal grid. Diagonal grid line. So there are, in Tecla structure, there are different ways to do it. Okay, one is you copy the grid line and then rotate it. That's, that's one way. Copy the grid line and then rotate. Okay, let me show you one by one. So let's say this one is the grid line. Right click, copy from this point to this point. So now I have a two grid lines. And then select this grid line, right click, and then move, rotate. Move, rotate. Rotate where? Here. Because I want this one is my, uh, my the point, the origin. If I click on this one, so I'm going to rotate to 18 meter, 18 meter X and Y. So what will be the rotation? 45 degrees, 30 degrees, negative 45, positive 45. So let's say 30 degrees and then modify. So that one is the rotation, 30 degrees. That is the diagonal grid line. So to check if that one is correct, there is an edit here and then here there is a measure angle. Edit, measure, angle. So select the origin, one, two, and then three. And there you go. So you have the 30 degrees rotation of the grid line. So can you try that one? Copy the grid line and then move, rotate. To copy, select the grid line, right click, copy. Uh, select the origin point and then the destination point and then select again the grid line that you have copied right click move special rotate and then pick the rotating point pick the origin and then change the angle and that will be your rotation
Okay, done? All right. Okay, the uh, other way. Okay, look. When, if you notice here, I put this 30. Okay, this is the time that I redraw. Because the only way to, to remove this 30 is to redraw. W, redraw. That or right click, redraw. So that one is the, it's just a temporary, it's just a temporary measurement. Okay, if you have some measurement like this, see this one? So you can, you can put this uh, measurement. You right click on the view, right click and then redraw to remove those measurement. Or earlier I've shown you, I created the, uh, the shortcut. You just press a letter, let's say W, I press W, that's my redraw, okay? Now, uh, the next way of uh, creating this one is, okay, I'm going to delete the grid line, okay? I, I delete the grid, huh? I delete the grid. Now, the next one is, uh, we can create a diagonal grid by simply, by, by changing our UCS, the view plane, the UCS, by changing the UCS. So how we change the UCS? Okay, so look, <clears throat> you will notice that here, this one, you will always find this UCS there. It will not, it will not, uh, it will not be removed there. It's always there. It always, uh, it always appear on the uh, right bottom corner. Okay, so whatever the movement of your view, then this UCS moves. Okay, so now, uh, enable for, for us to create the, uh, let's say the angle to change the UCS, we need to use our construction, construction point. Okay, construction point. So here, under this, you can see the construction point. There's a lot of construction point here. Uh, we will uh, discuss a few of them. Uh, the most important one uh, later, but now I want you to focus on the construction point along arc using center arc, center and arc point. Yeah, construction point along arc using center and arc point. Kindly click on that one. Click. So you must have this one angle and distance. Okay, yeah? Along, along arc. Along arc and this one. Along arc using center. From the top, it is the one, two, three, four, five, six. The six. From the top, the six. Okay, so once you click on that one, it will open to you this dialog box wherein uh, you can type the angle. So what angle you're, you want to use? Let's say 30 degrees also. So you type 30. You type 30. So apply. Apply. So this 30 degrees is something like uh, this 30 degrees angle. Uh, there will be an imaginary Okay, because here it will say pick the center point. So this one is the center point of the circle. So there will be an imaginary circle here. Okay, imaginary circle. So from this circle, pick the center point. So I'm going to click here. Okay. Okay, click the center point. And then that is the center point and then pick anywhere here okay put on the go to the right side and pick anywhere so once you click here let's say i click on the two meter so look i have the construction point placed there okay so this is the construction point so this construction point now if i measure this construction point so one two and then three so there you go. So you have the 30 degrees construction point there. Okay? So now, now that you have the construction point, so all we have to do is to change our view plane. 
Okay? Change our view plane. So, close it. Where is the view plane? Go to the view. And then here, work plane. So, we have a different work plane here, but I'm going to use the using three points. Work plane using three points. Okay, select that one. Now, pick the origin. So, this is the origin, one. Okay, this is the origin. Pick the positive x direction. So, now, it's for you to decide which one will be your x direction. Here, here. Okay, so, at this point, I'm going to use this one as my positive x direction. And then, now, Pick the point on positive y direction. So again, it's for you to decide whether your positive y will be below here or here. On the left or on the right. So let's say this one is my positive y. So no need for you to, to pick the right angle there. No need. It's just you need to pick the side where the y will be placed. Because it's always 90 degrees, right? So click here. And there you go. So you have now the x and y. Right? So now, uh, from here, from the UCS 0, 0, 0, I move the UCS here. Correct? So now, it's time for us to add the grid line. Now, it will be, compared to earlier, this one is a longer one. But, I mean, it can be useful later, maybe in a different case. But it's, it's good for you to know that uh, we can change the, the work plane. Okay? So now, if I want to add my uh, construct, my uh, grid line here, I will go to edit under this grid, create rectangular grid line. Here, create rectangular grid line, click on this one, and then there you go. So just simply click on this. So automatically it will be placed diagonally because it follows the work plane. Okay, now, to change the work plane to the origin, you must go to the view, work plane, and then parallel to XYZ plane. Okay, and then click change. So it will go back to the origin, original form. Okay, because you place already the diagonal, then if you want to go back to the original uh, work plane position, then you must go back to work plane parallel to X, Y, Z and then change. And there you go. Or, the other way is parallel to view plane, select this one and then pick the view. It's the same. Alright. Uh, what else? Yeah, uh, you will notice as well that under the grid there is a create radial grid. So pick the origin. So here, if you notice here, if you click the origin, then there will be it. You can create a radial grid as well, right? So Control Z again, click, add, uh, create radial grid. So if I click here. There you go. So that one is my radial grid. In case that your your grid line is something like uh, this curve. <laughs> and then, of course, if you double click on this one, the properties will be here. Yeah. So you can see here the properties of the radial grid is here. So radial, 2 meter, 2 meter, angular elevation, so you can try that one. Alright, so once you have done with that one, you can just simply delete all those grid and then we move forward and we go back to our original grid line.
And we are going, uh, this one is ready for our uh, modeling. Okay? So that will be in the afternoon. How, uh, how do we uh, delete the temporary measures? Uh, redraw. Redraw. Mm -hmm. Right click, cl select the view, right click, and then redraw. Get it? Okay. Again, you can put that one on your on your shortcut, huh? The redraw. In in my case, I put that one as I just simply type W and that's it. It will redraw all. All right. So um, in the afternoon, we're going to uh, uh, add the model. So um, we have already the grid line. So you have already the PDF file. We're going to add those uh, concrete element, and then uh, of course we there there will be a changes on that one because uh, on the on the second to root, then that will be. Uh, what you call that? Um, that will be structural steel, okay, on the top of the concrete. So that, that that's what we're going to do in the afternoon. All right. Is there any uh, any question before we uh, uh, we go for lunch? No questions. Okay. All right. So so let's. Come back uh, after 1:40. Ah, sorry, 1:110. Uh, okay.